Okay. So just scrying the aether of Ze, or Ze A. And I'm just sort of seeing my holy guardian angel come out before me. And there are these um, like little feelers that he's putting out. And he's bringing before me a big screen. And this screen is sort of like this live action screen of action going on. And he's the screen itself is like twisting around into a cylinder and then like a corkscrew. And what he's trying to show is like, if you take a corkscrew, you know, and you sort of look at it on its side, it's possible to sort of have something seem like a relatively corkscrew shape, but still more or less kind of follow this jagged seeming dimension. So, I mean, I guess we would see it more like weird kind of curvy things, but yeah, I guess at the end of the day, it could definitely look like a jagged edge if you're just looking at it from the side. So there's this combination of a twisting feeling, but also like jagged edge feeling to what is being shown to me. And I'm again, I'm being told that this is like real life happening, unfolding, you know, and if you, if you're able to sort of see, you know, real lives, real hearts playing out uh, through this, then, you know, it's, it's like you're starting to understand a little bit of the karma involved, like, for, for God and for all of the angels to do what they're going to do, because, I mean, this is a, it's a higher order reality, but it's, it's one that has sort of rules and, um, things built into it. So, I'm wondering, partly because my holy guardian angel has brought this before me, I say, well, um, where do holy guardian angels fit in? And again, this is stuff playing out. So to the holy guardian angel who is timeless, each one is looking in at this screen, but it's like they're seeing the entire point and they're seeing, depending on whether or not this happens for them, they're seeing the, po the point at which they're able to either come in and like make a little do their part be this is the part that they are like bound to be engaged with but also i'm seeing um a part where it's like uh, they're saying okay this is the part in which i am now unfolding into this 3d reality and never i'm being told by by mine he's saying never um in this sense of being embedded the way that human perception tends to be um but rather it's like okay here i am i'm here to do this thing and uh, i mean mine is very uh mission focused and yet there's this like dipping in this is what i have to do and still being it's sort of like um having one toe or one arm in the water but the rest of it is is outside of that mix. So I'm trying to relate this to the heart, given that it's my holy guardian angel. And it's feeling soft right now. And it's like I'm seeing this big wave. Again, there's very, very much a, a cylindrical feeling, but a cylinder wrapped up within spheres. Um, but within that, I mean, you can imagine like circular waves, right? Even though it's water, it seems chaotic. It's still moving about in its own way um, in, in what seems to be at times relatively um, orderly circles or cylinders, like a big wave coming and cresting over the beach you see makes a, a cylinder at the top or a near cylinder. And I'm reminded of that Japanese painting where it's, it's this big wave and it's just extraordinarily well done. It's a classic, so if you, you know which one I'm talking about. But it's like I'm being drawn to this 
And again, those feelers, so that sort of takes me full circle. That's what I was, my attention was being drawn to by my holy guardian angel. And so now imagine this, he brought this before me, but it's like there's this, there's a real sense of higher dimensionality to the heart and levels at which we're not always aware and levels that um, may not always like coincide well with space time and three dimensional reality and four dimensional if you're counting time as a dimension, which I tend to do. And again, I'm just getting this very, very soft sense in my heart. Um, and there's this feeling of calm that's come over it. And I'm peering in and I'm asking if any of the governors has anything and it seems like Zircol is coming and he's showing me earth itself. And he's saying, you know, do, at least for the sake of the next maybe 10 aethers or so, he's saying, do think of earth in terms of alchemical earth or elemental earth. He's saying, yes, he's aware of all of these other things, but, you know, specifically that, that Mercury, that Virgo, think about the way this geometry, right? It's like one of the big goals in what we could call loosely science or alchemy or study and learning and expansion of knowledge in medieval Europe and and a lot of the rest of the learned world had to do with trying to understand geometry and math and how that related to matter and they were also throwing in ideas of astrology and even though they didn't have the periodic table of the elements and all of that nonetheless there was a there was an attempt to reconcile via mathematics and via the understood properties of the signs and stuff like that so this is again taking us back to the monus hieroglyphica of john d um there was an attempt to try to rectify the world through math and through reason alone. And what was missing with that idea of reason alone was the heart. And so even though there, there was this very clear message from Christ, love your neighbor as yourself, etc., because it's almost as if where, where Venus is in her fall, that's where love is having a problem, right? And where is that? It's on Earth. So in Taurus, fixed Earth, that's fine, but it's this corruptibility of the human spirit. That's The problem is in Virgo, right? The problem is in the, that we, we tend to fall and we tend to be mutable and we, we can't get our act together and stick with the higher order principles that are beautiful and lovely and keep us all together. And so literally, right, the corruption of nature that could be Virgo, but at the same time, the only way to uncorrupt nature and rectify it is for it to also be changeable. So where love has fallen, love needs to be inserted back in basically in the appropriate way and in a Virgo way. So that those middle degrees of Virgo where that at that exact exaltation degree of do believe it's 15 Virgo, that's where Venus is receives her dignity by term and by decan. So, so this is where this 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 sense of love and love through the perfect through perfection and the perfection of love, all of these ideas are very much here. And so to keep this, I'm being told by Zircol to keep this in mind. It's the perfection of love. That is what is being gotten at with these um, with these next several aethers, and to keep this in mind, and keep in mind this geometry as a not only sort of a thing in it, in and of itself, but also a metaphor. So if we think about a Taurus coming in and and renewing itself, what does that mean? And if there's like these angles that it needs to meet up at, maybe it means we need to align those angles correctly. And how do we do that? explore the heart, 
you know, seek these mysteries, try to understand them, try to reconcile everything. And the rest, I'm told, is, is left to, to the audience to do this. But as far as I'm concerned, these will be explored more later. And I'm asking if there's anything else, and they're just bidding me pause as they work on my subtle body system. They're reminding me, by the way, to make sure to use both hands on the pages. I was not as good about that, but I'm just saying don't worry about it. It's, the stumbling is part of this. And you had a lot of reason to stumble. But uh, through God's grace, all is possible. And uh, thus ends the vision.